side there, what, nine years, world number one, and, and we knew it was going to take a, a big effort from us, but I wouldn't necessarily say it, it feels any better. It definitely doesn't feel any worse. Um, it's kind of hard to know what it feels like at the minute. You know, you're kind of, you're physically exhausted, but mentally you're, you're absolutely ecstatic. So, um, yeah, look, it, it's just, a, it's another little bit of history that, that this squad has managed to etch out for itself. Rory, um, there was a, a standing ovation, a noted standing ovation for you, which of course would have included the 2016 win. Had you even time to notice it, and were you happy with your own performance? Um, yeah, look, I suppose I thought that was maybe for Tag, because you know, Tag has a, had an unbelievable day in the, in the scrum. And yeah, look, I think we, we asked that question yesterday about the performance. And, I think w when you're a hooker, you, you judge a lot of your performance around the line out, rightly or wrongly, and um, it just felt, like I said yesterday, a little bit rusty in there, and it didn't go well, or as well as we'd like last week, and, and there was obviously a lot of pressure, because New Zealand have a fantastic line of defence, but I think for me, it was it was trying to block a bit of that out, and just go around and, and do what, what I do well for the team, and that's sort of working hard, and trying to hit a few things, and clean a few rocks, and and be there whenever the team need it. And, you know, I think if you can ask that of, of everyone on the team and everyone can put their hand up and say they do that, then generally what happens is you get a, you get a good team performance. Joe, what do you do most private at that point? Um, from start to finish, really. Uh, early in the game, those first few minutes, we were almost uh, camped on our line, defending <coughs> wave after wave of attack. We saw that off. Uh, got out of our, our area and, and put a bit of pressure down their end. We, we almost created a try, we got held up over the line, we got, we got very close, um, even with Rob Carney getting it over the line. Uh, I, I don't think it was a try, he wasn't on his feet when he picked it up anyway and, it, and there was a little knock on, but, but we felt we weren't far away and if we could get, get something on the back of it, it would help build confidence. And Then you know, maybe in the last 20 minutes we we put a bit more ball in the air. Fatigue was starting to take its toll. We started to get a little bit narrow, and um, you know we got a bit of joy in the air in the air early on uh, once we started kicking. But um, you know it's it's kind of like you get four and a half seconds of reprieve, and then they start coming back at you. And um, it, it it was an incredibly collective, um, hard earned win and. Yeah, I'm really proud of the way they stuck to the task. Steve Hansen says you're now favourites for the World Cup. Would you go along with that? The World Cup in 12 months' time or 11 months' time. So yeah, we're, we're going to work hard in the next week to make sure we're ready for the USA. And, um, you know, um, people will, I suppose, postulate about um, who's where and who's favourite. and. You know, um, I, I, it's a nebulous thing for us because all we can tangibly control is our preparation and then go out and try to work hard and get a performance. Do you, do you think that performance will be enough to see Johnny Sexton win player of the year at the end of the week? Yeah, I, I don't pick any of those things. So, uh, you know, I, I, I thought Johnny was, was incredibly good for us in all sorts of ways. He distributed really well. He... Uh, he Defensively, he stands up and, and delivers. Uh, he, he had cramp and he showed courage. He kept going. Um, and even toward the end of the game, uh, he said, oh, just give me a minute. Uh, I, I can finish this out. But uh, we decided not to give him a minute because uh, he, he'd pushed himself far enough. So is he a super player for us? Absolutely. Um, and somebody else will make decisions about if he's good enough to to be considered the World Player of the Year. Joe, Yeah, I, I kind of answered it uh, before just by saying that I, I think um, he probably enjoyed uh, a little bit of banter. I, I've got huge respect for Steve, uh, Fozzy and, and, uh, and Scott McLeod, the, the coaching staff, Mike Cron. So, you know, for us to be favourites when they've been the world number one team for nine years and continue to be the world number one team, I, I think we were at home. They're on the back of quite a long series of games where they've travelled around the world a number of times. 
I thought the crowd were phenomenal tonight. You know, there, that's a lot of things stacked in our favour. So we'll take tonight and we'll leave 11 months for 11 months' time. But Joe, the All Blacks have come up to Europe and won consistently. And, you know, you guys have done something that hasn't been done up here for, for a wee while. <laughs> Don't your players deserve the credit of being called the World Cup favourites, given how they have played tonight and also over the course of the last 18 months? I, I think you could ask Bestie that, but f for me, the, pl the players are pretty happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I'm not going to let them answer it anyway. <laughs> but what I would say is, is the players, they, they do live in a bit of a bubble during these periods of time. Uh, they work away and they come out and try to perform. And really, as I said earlier, um, you're being called World Cup favourites. What, what do you tangibly get, gain from that? You know, if we train well, we, there's some tangible gain. If we put a set play together and we're all on the same page and, and we get our timing right, execution's good, we get something tangible from that. And uh, they're a great bunch because it's all about things that are tangible for them and, and not um, those, those things that we can't really control what people say, but we, we can try to control how we prepare and play. Yeah, but we couldn't lose this one. We were seven points in front. But yeah, you're right. Um, as they worked their way back up the field, I think they got the penalty. They they, they came up the field, and you know, it, it was a little bit reminiscent of that. And, and maybe we got a bit lucky a few times. You know, Kieran Reid. How many times would you see him knock that charge down on? There was no one in front of him. Um, I think Rob Carney got in the passing channel at one stage when Bowden Barrett, it looked like a score might happen. And I'm not quite sure how Pete Omani managed to get to that chip ahead. We looked like we were numbers down and, and almost gone. And you know, you've got to be proud about the, the way the guy scrambled, but at the same time, you've got to be realistic about there's three pretty clear cut chances that they didn't take. And, and we took one of a, a couple we maybe had. You know, as I said, Rob Carney wasn't far away um, when, when he got. Uh, the ball over the line and we got held up uh, over the line another time. So you know, I just thought it was a fantastic test match uh, and I thought it was, the, the way it had been built up as 1v2, I, I thought it was a heavyweight contest. How much better is it to win without letting them score a try? Uh, look, you can ask Andy Farrell that, he's delighted, uh, no doubt, because um, <laughs> It is so seldom that, that the All Blacks don't score a try, but as I just explained, there were three potential tries that we, that we managed to scramble on. So on any given day, they might get a couple of those and, and it's all different. The, the other narrow margins, we, as I say, we, we almost got another couple and uh, Jacob Stockdale, what do you say? Um, you know, he, he got some good space down that short side, but once he controlled that chip ahead and it was reminiscent, I thought, of the Twickenham one where he went down the short side with Connor Murray and, and got that chip over the, uh, over the top to, to get that try, which was crucial in giving us a bit of scoreboard separation um, against England. Does a performance like that... Sorry, Andy, we're, 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 we're going to move it on because Rory, it's three in a row there. Rory, just then, the self-belief that Jacob showed to you know, take that kick again after the first one was charged down, does that kind of have a ripple effect throughout the team then? Yeah, look, I think th there's, there's no doubt that, that we have a lot of quality players, um, I wouldn't just say quality young players, because quality players right across the board, and we prepare really well to make sure that, that we know that we can execute things, and when they don't necessarily come off first time, um, it does take a little bit of, um, how do you say, confidence to, to chip that over again, and look, Jacob's a, a fantastic player, like a lot of players are in the squad, and he got his opportunity, it was a really well worked move, um, Bundy put him in a bit of space, um, I was outside him, probably not in as much space, and he just put it over the top. And I think it shows that he doesn't necessarily look the fastest until you go to keep up with him. Big long stride on him, and he went past it. And as has happened to him over the last sort of 12, 18 months, the ball bounced his way. But I do think that you make your own luck with those with those bounces. And and he is in the right place at the right time. And, and it was great to see. And obviously, it was it was very important for us. We knew that we probably needed to score. A try in the second half to, to win that game. Sorry, sorry this gentleman here is going to come in. Joe, just about uh, Andrew Farrell. What is it about his 
defensive system. All that seems to really quite hate playing against it at times. So yeah, it's it, it, it's not. You know, you get up, you form a line, and you get off it to to make tackles. It's 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 not rocket science, but it's. I think it's everyone understanding their role. I think it's everyone committing to their role and trusting that other people will do their role, so that you don't get you don't get people over chasing to somebody else. There was a few times um, they got us back on the inside. Damien McKenzie came through the middle one time. You know, there, there were times that we that we did get severed, and and um, you know, the, the great thing about Fares is that he'll look at those and. You know, he, he, he'll pat guys on the back, but he'll start there and say, well, here's a couple of solutions to this. What do you guys think? And, and we'll, we'll springboard from there. So, yeah, look, he's doing a super job. He's doing a great job. And uh, I've really enjoyed working with him uh, over the last kind of two and a half years. And, um, you know, Simon needs to be with the line-out. I know a lot of people thought that our line-out was a little bit um, flimsy last week, but... I thought that first half line out, that, that was a fantastic um, kind of platform for us to, to springboard into the game, and as was the scrum. And, you know, Greg Feek is a bit of an unsung hero there as well. So, yeah, I, I'm lucky. I, I've got a, a team behind the team who do a, a super job. Rory, Rory, what, okay. Rory, what does a performance under a result like that do for your team confidence ahead of a World Cup year? Um, look, I think it, it, it obviously does a lot. You know, it's um, when you beat the best team in the world, and, and like Joe said, that it has been the best team in the world for nine years now. You know, it, it takes a, a big performance. Probably the, the thing now is that Joe and, and the team, Faz, Simon, and think, you know, they're going to expect that to be the standard. They're going to expect uh, an improvement not next week, the next time after next week when we meet up for the Six Nations. That's going to be the level of preparation and the, le and the level of performance that is expected and that's that's how you improve you you try to play better and when you play better that becomes your minimum and then you keep trying to push beyond that and and you look at ways to improve um joe's already pointed out that that Faz will look at a few things <coughs> excuse me in defense where we can get better there'll be a few things in attack we can get better um and right across the board and look it was a great performance and a great result and it means a lot to us to, to beat new zealand on home soil but once the dust settles on it, it'll be about moving forward and seeing how we can improve, and, and that'll be a, a really good standard for us to hold ourselves accountable to. Rory, there was a few World Class locks and show tonight, but just as a player group, are you surprised anymore about James Ryan's performances just week to week and what he's delivering and against the caliber of players he's delivering? Uh, no, I think he, he's shown now in, in some very big games, both for club and country, what he can do, and like I said, you know, age is only sort of something that is talked about mostly in the media you know just because James is young it doesn't mean we, we know what he can do so we expect him to produce that and we'll be expecting to produce that now for probably many years to come but it doesn't matter that, that he's the youngest of the of the three locks there that he has shown that that's what he's capable of and, and that's what we expect we expect him to prepare well so that he can deliver that on a Saturday yep. just, uh, John Two questions: Where does this rank in your coaching career, this victory, and also is there any sort of mixed emotions at all in New Zealand? Yeah, look, I, I'm 100 All Black supporter when they're playing anyone but us. Um, you know, just because that's that's where the roots were, and and um, at the same time, I work with an incredibly uh, committed bunch of of men um, who who really go out and earn what they get, and. Uh, so there's no real mixed emotion about that because they're the people I'm close to and, and they're the people I see working so hard to achieve what they do. Um, you know, uh, it's, it, it is one of those things that uh, I, I suppose, you know, it, it does make it a little bit more complicated in this game, particularly for me, but uh, at the same time, uh, you know, I, I'm incredibly proud of the group of uh, Irish players who, who went out there and did what they did tonight. How long was the key to come up with those moves and uh, have you been holding that one back for tonight? Um, not, not, not really. And uh, I mostly steal them from other people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm always on the lookout. I'm always keeping my eye out. I, I watch Mighty Teen Cup. They've always got a couple of good ones. Um, uh, there was a really good one 
It looked like the, the Highlanders played, you know, uh, recently I, I showed that to the coaches and just said, hey, we could maybe do this because, um, you know, it's hard to get patents on moves. Um, so so we, we work away. What we do is, uh, you know, one of the things with the All Blacks, they work so hard um, that they... They work in to get into that chip line. They work across so they can get the, the far side of the, uh, of the uh, defence up. So we kind of felt that we could go back down that short side. Now, as Bestie says, sometimes they, they work and sometimes they don't. But it, it's always nice when you do put them together. And it, it's, it's nice when everyone knows their role and, and, and they, they come off. But, you know, the, the other coaching staff, they come up with some as well. I've come up with some incredibly poor moves in my time. Um, Bestie will probably testify to that. Um, they, they looked really good on paper, though. Okay, folks.